The verdict came down here um, about 45 minutes ago. 82 year old Peter Nygaard guilty of four counts of sexual assault, not guilty of one other count of sexual assault, and not guilty on one charge of forcible confinement. Now, Natasha, many of these charges go back decades. The five women who came forward in this case, the five complainants, their allegations range from the late 1980s all the way up to 2005. This is the first time that Peter Nygaard has ever faced uh, charges of sexual assault in an actual courtroom. There's been allegations, of course, floating around for years, and he's facing charges in a number of other jurisdictions. But this is the first time that he's faced charges in court. This case went on for a little more than six weeks. This is the fifth day that the 12 person uh, jury has been out deliberating, but they did come back with news this morning that they had finally reached a verdict uh, in this case. Uh, when the 82 year old uh, Nygaard heard the verdict, very little reaction, if any reaction from him. Uh, he kind of just stared uh, straight ahead. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, Natasha, a long legal road beyond uh, this case here in uh, Toronto. Uh, we heard from Peter Nygaard's defense attorney afterwards, the renowned uh, Canadian lawyer, Brian Greenspan. In fact, uh, I, I don't think it's a straight line, So, and nor is there a, a, an easy answer to that. He has an outstanding matter in Montreal, he has an outstanding matter in Winnipeg, uh, and uh, the uh, extradition, uh, the appeal against uh, the order of the minister with respect to his surrender to the United States, uh, the decision has not yet been rendered. Uh, it was argued about six months ago. Now, Natasha, as I mentioned, uh, in this case, there were five complainants, but there was originally uh, eight women who came forward uh, to Toronto Police. Mr. Nygaard was originally facing 11 charges uh, in uh, this case, some of which did not uh, reach a trial. Also uh, facing uh, charges in Manitoba, facing charges in Quebec, facing charges in, uh, in New York, uh, dozens of women involved in a, a civil suit. Uh, after the verdict came down, uh, Shannon Maroney, who's a therapist who has worked directly with uh, some of the victims in this case, we could overhear her um, in tears talking to some of the women who came forward who testified in open court in this case against um, Peter Nygaard. Here's what she had to say uh, after the verdict came down. As one said to me, he got to live his whole life exactly as he wanted until he was 80 years old. And for many of them, they have been in. Uh, he's now going to prison, but they are still doing the work to get out of the prison of pain, shame, indignity, fear, lack of trust, all those things that they've suffered with for so many years. Now, Natasha, a couple other things I want to mention uh, quickly, of course, you know, what's next in this case? We're going to come back to court on November 20th, and that's when a sentencing date is going to be uh set for uh, for Peter Nygaard um, tied to the uh, convictions we heard today. Whether he's going to appeal these uh, convictions, his lawyer Brian Greenspan wasn't ready to kind of comment on that yet. I can also tell you that moments ago, uh, Peter Nygaard left uh, in a Toronto police van. A number of photos I just saw of him. He was slumped in the back of that van in a black parka. Much of his face uh, covered. Uh, tremendous fall for someone who was obviously once a titan of the fashion industry uh, in this country, in North America, around the world, who faced dozens uh, of accusations from, from women all over the world, from Bahamas to the United States to here in Canada, that he sexually assaulted them. He always denied uh, all of those charges, but here in Toronto, many years later, many years after the fact, Peter Nygaard convicted of four counts of, uh, of sexual assault. And uh, as you heard Shannon Maroney say, uh, the victims in this case, obviously a day for them that they never thought would come, but obviously feeling tremendously vindicated. Natasha? And we're hoping to have a lengthier conversation with Shannon later on during the show. But in the meantime, CBC's Jamie Strachan, thank you for bringing us the latest from Toronto.
Okay, for more analysis on the legality of everything we've witnessed in the past six weeks, as well as the verdict, we're joined now by Hillary Dudding. She's a criminal defense lawyer, and she also joins us from Toronto. Hillary, thank you so much for making time for us. Oh, not at all, Natasha. Thanks for having me. Well, let me begin by getting your initial reaction to the verdict. Well, you know, I, I think, Natasha, what's clear is that the jury worked really hard and, and spent a long time carefully considering the evidence in this case. Um, you know, it's, it's obvious that they didn't accept all of the evidence that they heard. Uh, and it's also clear that they uh, accepted a great deal of the evidence that they did hear, and I think probably uh, strongly considered the fact that there were uh, five people, four women, that uh, ultimately whose accounts resulted in convictions. I'm sure that played a big role in all of this. If you're able to help us understand where did the Crown succeed and where did the defense fail in this case? Well, I mean, I think it's the standard of proof is really high in a criminal case, and that's for very good reason. Um, I, I think in a case where the allegations are historic, they happened a long time ago, that can pose challenges for the defense and for the Crown in terms of proving the charges. And certainly in this case, the complainants were cross-examined at length about their memories. And of course, uh, Mr. Nygaard's story uh, was that in four out of the five uh, cases, he had no recollection of meeting the people at all. And that can pose difficulties on either side. But clearly, I think the jury, after considering it, uh, found that the complainants were credible. And I think uh, in terms of the defense, it's always very difficult when the defense is one of, I, I don't recall, but that's not the kind of thing I would be likely to do, I think. Uh, that may well be the case, but clearly the jury were not left in a doubt by that. Talk to me about what we've heard from Nygaard's son, Kai, and how unusual that is to, to have a son come out that aggressively against a father in a case like this. Well, yes, you know, it, I, I suppose... <sighs> You know, in life, there are many circumstances, uh, and I, it's probably not the first and the last time that uh, the child of an accused person uh, is prepared and willing to give evidence like that against them. But it is quite powerful, and, and it's not surprising, really, that that was powerful uh, for them to hear somebody who you might otherwise expect to have a lot of loyalty uh, have such strenuous evidence uh, to give about it. So, yes, I know uh, it, it, it's true. It is a compelling and interesting feature of the case, for sure. We know that Nygaard is also facing challenges in Montreal and charges in Winnipeg, and then there's the extradition to the United States. From a legal perspective, I mean, there's the court of public opinion where this will sway people greatly, but... In legal terms, does this conviction have any impact on those cases moving forward? Well, it may well. Uh, you know, you, you can't gain say that at this point he's been found guilty of offenses and has a criminal record in Canada. Uh, depending on the circumstances, that can be admissible in other cases. Um, I will say this. Uh, I think... Peter Nygaard has a long road ahead. Even in the case of these charges, he has an automatic avenue of appeal. I know I just heard Mr. Greenspan say that there's no decisions that have been made yet about appealing, but he has an automatic right to appeal, and he can also apply for bail pending appeal as well. Um, the appeal process can be a long one, uh, and it may uh, be years, in fact, before the process just with respect to these charges is complete, let alone uh, in the case of the other ones. So I think there is a, a long road ahead here. You're talking about years for a possible appeal, a long road ahead, but this man is 82 years old. What do you anticipate in terms of the sentence? Well, I, there's no question that these are really serious uh, charges, Natasha, and I think it's obvious to anybody uh, who, who knows uh, how sentencing goes in criminal matters involving sexual offenses that this is going to attract uh, not just a penitentiary sentence, but I think a significant one. I would be surprised uh, if it was anything under five years and could be 10 years or more, um, given the seriousness of what's alleged and the number of um, now victims. So 
you know, I, I, I think the sentence will be significant for these charges. And of course, there's similar charges in other jurisdictions, as you've said. So, uh, and he is 82 years old. So I, I, I do expect that uh, this probably will mark the rest of uh, Mr. Nygaard's life.